Hey, this is Passy from Passy's World of ICT, the guy with the white hat. And we've got an Adobe Animate CC tutorial. We haven't had one of these for such a long time. And this one is, we're gonna do cookie cutter drawing. And what you can do with that is, you can make emojis. So we're gonna make all these little kind of emoji guys. And we're gonna use cookie cutting, maybe mainly to make the eyes for them, all right? And then what you can do also is you can bend lines to make either an unhappy emoji or a happy emoji. And we'd like the happier ones better, although this one on the right hand side, he's not too sure of himself. All right, so this is a uh, complete beginner's lesson, but remember we're a slow talker. So on the YouTube uh, play bar down the bottom, there's a tools cog. All right, this cog. And what you can do is you can click on that and then change the playback speed either to 1.5 or 1.75 and you'll find the video flows a lot better. Now this is gonna be a long video because uh, it's supposed to be like a complete introduction to animate even if you haven't used it before for complete beginners. So we will have a timeline index. So make sure you take breaks. In the video description, uh, what you can do is, it, this isn't the one for this video obviously, but say if you get up to create the new project here and you stop, well, when you come back next time uh, to YouTube, all you have to do is go to that video, go to the description, and just click on this 1612 and that'll take you straight to the next section. All right, so this is, uh, you know, probably two lessons in one, three lessons in one. So make sure you take breaks if it's too long for you, uh, or you can do it all in one hit, up to you. So the learning objectives in this is, this is supposed to be a great fun beginner's lesson. So as well as making emojis, and we're gonna make a Pac-Man as well, uh, we're gonna learn how to start up Animate. Now, Animate used to be a red icon, all right, but they uh, came up with this new thing called SP, uh, which is, Oh, Spark, Adobe Spark for making presentations. So Animate now has got the same sort of color scheme as uh, like Photoshop and Lightroom, which I really don't like uh, because I don't think it fits in with those. You're not processing kind of images out of a camera uh, when you do Animate necessarily. We like the old red one, and so we're sticking with the red one because we've got the shirt as well. Uh, we don't have one of those right color shirts for the video. Uh, now the oval tool, we're gonna learn that for drawing circles and oval shapes, that's all the important part of the emojis. Uh, the, what the stroke and fill is and the no color option icon, how you use that. How can you use the artist palette to make 3D gradient fills? Object drawing mode, which we need to uh, make sure we've got it turned off before we do our cookie cutting. And we'll learn how to do cookie cutting, which is mainly involved with making the eyes for the emoji. How to resize, rotate, and flip shapes around horizontally and vertically, because if you make one eye, you might want to just copy and make the other one and then flip it around. Uh, how to draw lines and then bend them into shape so you can make emoji mouths. And you can also make eyebrows that way as well for your emoji. Um, and then how to save and copy that finished emoji as a PNG image file using file export, right? And the really nice thing is that when you make these emoji characters and you save them as PNGs, then you can use them in other projects, okay? So um, we especially use them in computer programming games that we're making in Python and uh, Visual Studio. So it's a handy skill for programmers to have as well. So let's look at the Adobe Animate Startup. And when you start it up, we're looking at Animate 2021, uh, you get this screen where you have to create new, all right? So on that first screen that comes up when you start up Animate, just go straight to create new. And then the new document setup. The main thing is we're using 800 by 600 size. And so you can either use education or game, either of these two options, uh, which come up in this panel when you click create click to create a new one. We're using medium 800 by 600. Now platform type, um, you can just use HTML5 canvas, which I think is the default. So in this drop down arrow here, just leave it on HTML5 canvas. And then all we got to do is click this create button down here. And that's going to bring us uh, to the next screen. So you don't have to use ActionScript 3 if you're an old user of Animate and Flash. Uh, just HTML5 Canvas works fine for what we're doing in this lesson. So then we get to the stage, <clears throat> and this is kind of like our work board. And like if you've used Photoshop, it's kind of similar things. You've got tools down the side here, and you've got kind of your other things, properties and things over here on the right hand side. This is where we're doing the work. Now this one's the timeline down the bottom for animating. So uh, we're not gonna be using that for this particular project. But the thing is you need to make sure you're on essentials. So whoops, let's go back one there. 
I thought we had some more things on it. So if you mouse over the edges of the tools and the timeline, uh, you can get these double arrows. So we always stretch it out so it's too wide because otherwise you can't see everything on your screen, see all the tools and the properties. So make sure you stretch that out to be either two or three wide. Uh, now, click on this one here, number two, and we should have a little two up there actually on the slide. Uh, and, that, and from that drop down list, uh, the workspace you want to pick is the Essentials workspace, okay? Then you'll have all the same tools and icons we've got here, all right? So they're the two key things you need to set up your workspace. Just stretch this out to make uh, the tools double column and make sure you click on this top one just here and get it set to Essentials. All right, so let's have a look at starting Adobe Animate. Uh, you might have the icon in your start. If you don't, uh, you can just usually type it in with the search box. Just put in Animate. And Adobe Animate 2021 is the one we want to start up, all right? So you click on that, and we'll just go through what we've done already. So we'll kind of uh, do a little bit of demoing and a bit of... Um, slides and kind of mix it all up a bit in this. It's taking a while for Animate to start up there. Okay, so that's the screen we'll have. And remember, we're doing Create New. And when you click that, this comes up, this panel. Now you can either use Education or Game. And the size you want this medium one, 800 by 600. HTML5 Canvas here is fine and we go Create. And that's gonna open up our work area. So as we're talking about here, it's usually all down in one like this, which is a real pain because on most monitors, you can't see all the things at the bottom. So you need to get here till you get mouse, move your mouse there till you get the double arrows, which are white colored. And when you get those double arrows, that's when you push down the button and you can stretch this out. So stretch it out so it's kind of two columns wide. Now this timeline down the bottom, because we're not using the timeline, again, you can get double arrows there. You can just squash that down a bit, uh, just so we've got a little bit more work area here. And make sure you click, uh, not this upload, quick share and publish, but this one workspaces and make sure you're on essentials, okay? That's essential uh, that you're on essentials. So that's what we're up to at the moment. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna be doing is drawing circles, or you can draw ovals, it's all the same tool. So in the tools there, if you go down, there's kind of this oval shape tool. So you need to click on that, so it's kind of highlighted in gray here, uh, so that we're on that tool. And then over on the far right hand side of the screen, there's properties. Now we're setting the properties here for oval. Uh, we're going to set them so that we've got uh, this yellow fill and black here. We'll do that in a minute. So the properties can be set here. And if the properties, if this isn't showing up on your screen on the right hand side, you'll need to go to the top of the screen and go window and just make sure properties is ticked. Likewise, if your tools aren't showing up, do window up the top there and make sure tools is ticked, all right? But if you set it up to essentials, it should have your tools and properties. But if they are missing, all right, just remember window, turn the tools on and turn the properties on so they're ticked and then you'll be able to see them and that will be okay. All right, now there's a concept called stroke and fill in Animate. And what it is, is that this has a black stroke around the outside and a yellow fill on the inside, all right? So stroke is kind of your outside color uh, border that you're drawing your shape. And then fill is when you color the shape in and fill it in. All right, so on properties oval, if you click on the fill here, Sorry, we're doing the stroke first. So to get that black color, we just clicked here on the color panel for stroke and we made sure in our swatches here that come up uh, that we've just chosen this one in the corner, which is obviously black. And for our fill, um, we're gonna do that in a minute. Ah, now the thing is, if you don't want the black line around the outside here, okay, you use this one, which is the no color option. Now where that is on the screen, uh, is a good question. It's right up here, not easy to see, okay? So the no color option, if you don't want anything around the outside, if you want it to be invisible and only want to have a yellow circle with no border around it, then you need to click this one, which is the no color option, all right? So 
Um, now the slider for the sides, that one we've drawn is, you know, fairly thick. It's not sort of uh, really thin. Uh, so you can set the stroke size here and we've just used the slider to make it eight. I think you can also type in there. Eight seems to work well for when you're making emoji, all right? For if you want to have this stroke around the outside on your emoji. So size eight is what we recommend. So that's getting the outside all set up in black and a thickness of eight. And now I think we need to do the fill color. So the fill color, if you click on this panel color palette here, what will happen is uh, we've just chosen this yellow. So click on the color block and then choose that yellow. Now, if you want a 3D radial gradient fill, uh, then what you can do is you can click on this paint palette over here. All right. And <clears throat> what happens then is that click on the paint bucket because that's the fill. All right, so yeah, stroke is the pencil around the outside. Bucket is what you paint it in with and fill it. So you need to click on that one. And then on this drop down list, instead of having solid, just a plain solid like that yellow, you click down in here and we're gonna have a radial gradient. So you need to click on radial gradient and select that. So use this little arrow to get radial gradient. Then we set our swatch color. So this one here is set to a yellow, uh, this one is set to kind of a medium orange and this is set to a dark orange and that gives you yellow in the middle and orange around the outside and kind of makes it a bit like a, a 3D kind of shape if you want that sort of thing for your emoji. So you can use 3D fills as well. All right, so before we cookie cut, uh, yeah, now that we're getting into cookie cutting, let's just jump across and make the emoji face and show you what all that was about. Okay, so here we are in Animate. We're getting on the oval tool. The fill color we want to use is that yellow. And for our stroke, we want to have it black here and we want to make this size up to, with the slider carefully, up to an eight. Now it doesn't want to do eight, so I'm just going to click in there and type eight in that box. So we've got exactly eight. Now this one here will uh, make you a yellow one like that, okay? So we're gonna kind of make our face over here. And then on the right hand side, well, we've got this room here because you build the eyes and mouth separately, then you slide them over there. Now that's a little small, so let's just control Z, control and Z or control, hold down the CTRL key and press Z to go backwards. We probably need it a bit bigger. Okay, so see if you go this way, it becomes oval, but we want it circled, so make sure it's a circle one. Uh, kind of like, whoops, that. Now, if you change your mind and you said, oh, no, I want to have that 3D one. Remember over here on the right hand side, there's that paint palette and you just click on that. And then we're on paint bucket is yellow at the moment. Okay. And it's a solid color. What we do is uh, make sure you're not on pencil. You need to be on paint bucket and click on that. And we're going for radial gradient. All right. Now with a radial gradient, uh, we should have here, it's just gonna be black and white. So that's not too good. Remember this one here, double click on that little color there. And we want that one to be yellow. The one on the right hand side, uh, double click on that. And we want that to kind of be a dark orange. And the one in the middle here, and to make the one in the middle, you just click there and it'll make a new one. Now, if you make too many and you wanna get rid of one, you just push down with your mouse and drag it away and it disappears. So you can just push down on the mouse button, drag it away and it disappears. But this one here, uh, click on it to make it, click on it, double click it to get the colors. Uh, this needs to kind of be a medium kind of orange like that. And what we should find now is that when we draw our oval, let's just do this one under here, uh, you can see this kind of got that 3D uh, kind of radial gradient in it, all right? So that's kind of our emoji face done. Now, if you want to move things, uh, we just got on this home key, this black arrow in the top left-hand corner. That's kind of like your home key. And if we draw a rectangle around that, uh, so that everything's all dotty, the outside's dotty and the inside's dotty. That means it's all selected. And then we can just move that one there. And this one here, we're just going to uh, now see this. Uh, we only had the middle selected. Oops, we didn't have the stroke around the outside. So just go control, hold down the CTRL key and press Z to go backwards. And what we can do is we can click on this one as well and hold down shift and click on that one. So that's one way to do it. Let's do that. You hold down the shift key and you click on this one, then you click on the outside one. That's got the whole lot selected. The other way where you don't hold down shift is just to get your black arrow key here 
and draw around the whole thing to make sure it's all selected, all right? Now this one we need to make a bit bigger. So we're gonna use this one under the black arrow, the free transform tool. And if you've used Microsoft and PowerPoint and things like that, you know you can kind of grab corners and resize. So we can make that one bigger uh, like that. So anyway, that's a couple of emoji faces. That's going all right. Now let's get back to the next thing. We're gonna use cookie cutter to make our eyes over in this area. Then we're gonna move them over onto the emoji. All right, now before we do cookie cut, we've got to make sure object drawing is turned off. All right, so on our oval tool, <coughs> down the bottom here, uh, there's a little symbol which tells us the property that it's on at the moment. And <coughs> object drawing mode is turned off when we click the icon and it doesn't have a light gray box around it, all right? Um, <coughs> and then if you want to turn it on, uh, which we'll see why we might want to do that later. Uh, then you need to click it so it does have the gray box around it, all right? So clicking it turns it on and clicking again turns it off and clicking turns it on and clicking turns it off. Uh, we'll show what you what we mean in Animate if you have a quick look at this. All right, so we're in Animate and we've gone on to the Oval tool and down the bottom here, it's got the object drawing mode. Okay, now if we click it, it's got a very light gray box around it now, so it is in object drawing mode. If we click it like that, and it's just a little square, it's not in object drawing mode. Now over on the right hand side in the properties, you can do the same thing, I think. You can click it here, and it's got kind of a, a blue thing around it. That means it's in object drawing mode, but you can't turn it off here. It's kind of stuck. So if you go down to this bottom one on the bottom left hand corner, uh, we can click there to turn it off. So the little one is where it's turned off and that's what we need. Uh, don't have the big square around it uh, that's shaded in gray because then it's turned on. All right, now object drawings turned on when we click the icon has a light gray box around it. So see in this one, it's got the light gray box, so it's kind of bigger. So bigger means it's turned on, uh, kind of like a light going on. Think of a light being turned on and you'd see the light around the outside of it. When it's turned off, it's like this and it's just a little square. So remember, small tiny icon equals off and big gray box equals on. So you've got to make sure it's off. That's super, super important. Now I've just been uh, pushing down on something there. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so anime cookie cutty drawing. Uh, now we've got a blue stage here. We're going to change the color of our background. Now how you do that is in the properties, if you click anywhere on this white part, it'll be white at the moment, click there and pick a blue. You can make the background go blue because uh, we're going to want to draw a white circle for the eye. So we need to change the background color of the stage. So we'll just show you that quickly in animate. All right, so we can't draw a white circle here. So if you get on your black arrow tool uh, up the top left hand corner, click anywhere on this white area. So the stage or the work area is selected. And on this stage color block down here where it says stage, just uh, get it to be a nice bright blue color like that. All right, so we're gonna use this cookie cutter now to make the white inside of the eyes. So you've gotta make sure you're on the home dark arrow tool first before you click on here and set that stage color to blue. For some reason, our animation went backwards order there. Uh, so that's all good and we're ready to go. So we're gonna make these eyes and what we're gonna do is we do a black circle uh, and then we have a white circle we draw this going inside it, but we've cut a bit out of the white circle to make it into a moon shape, uh, which you'll see as we go along. Now, using the oval tool, we're gonna to draw three colored ovals, uh, and one's the black one, one's the white one, and the other one we're gonna to use to do the cookie cutting. All right, so mouse drag from left to down to the right, so you mouse drag diagonally, kind of like this direction actually, uh, to do it. Now we want to make sure stroke color is set to no color when we're doing this, all right? So we're going to make these circles uh, about this size. Now if you mess it up at any time, remember you can hold down control and use the Z or the Z uh, to go backwards. So let's have a go at that in Animate. Okay, so we're on the oval tool, but we're going to set the stroke color to this thing up here, which is no color, and we're going to set our fill to white, all right? Uh, no, actually the first circle was black, so we're going to set our fill color to black, first of all. Now this is going to be the eye that goes around the outside. Uh, now if you draw it on here and move it, it's going to do cookie cutting and make holes in there. We'll show you what we mean, actually. If we do that, 
and then we click on it and move it. Oops, it's cut a hole in there. That's cookie cutting. Uh, but we don't actually want to do cookie cutting uh, on that. So what we need to do is get on our oval tool. We've just got black and no color for the stroke. Now we need to estimate how big is the outside of the eye going to be. Well, let's say it's going to be about that big. And now we need to change the fill color over to white. And we're going to draw a slightly smaller one. Now the smaller one kind of needs to go around the inside of that one. Uh, I think that will be okay. And then we need a red one, which we're going to use for the actual cookie cutting. Uh, so that needs to be uh, almost the same size as the white one. Probably like that is okay. All right. Now let's show you how the cookie cutting works. What we do is we get on our red one and we move it in here and you can see uh, we've got kind of that much white remaining now. Um, whoops, like that. Okay. And then if we click off the red one, so click off it so it doesn't have all the dots on it and it's not selected and then move it away. It's kind of like using a cookie cutter in the kitchen and it's cut that bit out. And now the idea is that we take this white bit and we move that over onto this guy and we kind of have an eye with a bit of a border on it like that. Okay, so that's, that's not too bad. All right, now so that this doesn't do cookie cutting, uh, what we want to do is we're going to make that into an object. So we actually draw a rectangle, a square around it. All right, now this is going to be in the instructions if you forget what we're doing here and right click on it and go convert to symbol down the bottom here. Now the symbol name for this is, we might as well just call it I, E, Y, E and leave it as a graphic symbol, leave registration clicked in the middle and just say OK. Now that one now, because we made an object, it's not going to do cookie cutting. So if we move it over onto here, OK, it's not going to cookie cut. All right, so we move it onto there and we've got one I. Now to make the second eye to copy it, you can go edit, copy, edit, paste. But the easiest way is hold down the ALT key, the ALT key and drag that. And then you've kind of got your second eye there. Okay, whoops, like that. All right. Now, if your eyes aren't quite straight or if you want to change them, you can use that one under the black arrow. Remember that free transform one? You can move up off the uh, right hand corner of it here and you can kind of do things like this where you rotate it round and we can kind of have those eyes looking up in the air like that if we want to. All right. So let's just go control Z because uh, we just want them kind of looking to, both looking to the right like that. All right. So let's get you caught up in the instructions. All right, so we drew our circles and you saw us do that. And remember, click on the red circle. So it's got all the pin cushions on it. You move it over the white one and then you uh, drag it off the white one and it'll do the cookie cutting. All right. So remember, you see old control and Z if you need to, to repeat that. And now the red circle we're going to delete. So I didn't show you that, but you just click on it. So it's highlighted and press the delete key on your computer and you can delete that red circle and get rid of it. And then the idea is to move the white one over here and that's got a bit of a thicker border. So maybe our white circle was too big. So you could control Z back and make your white circle smaller and have another go if you want to get it perfect like this. So it does take a little bit of fiddling around uh, like anything. Now, you go onto uh, this black arrow tool here, not on the oval tool. We drew the square around it, remember? So it was always dotty, had dot, 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 little dots all over it, which means it's selected. And then what we did after that was we did our right click and we did convert to symbol. Okay, so we're doing a lot of stuff here. Now, if you forget, you can get a copy of these step-by-step uh, -step instructions in the downloads. So in the video description, just go to the video description. There'll be a link where you can um, download this set of step-by-step -step instructions, all right? So you don't have to fiddle around trying to rewind the video and watch it again. You can just use the instructions. And then we gave it a name of I and we just clicked OK. And then uh, 
remember if your eye this eye is tilted down a bit it's not quite straight so remember how we got on that tool underneath the black arrow and if you get move your mouse just off the corner you'll get the turnaround symbol now as soon as the turnaround symbol shows you press down your mouse and then you can push upwards and it'll kind of turn the eye around so we kind of showed you how to do that as well so you get your eye all perfect and then you can um, zoom in also uh, if you need to zoom in to do some work uh, which will can help out with a lot of the detail here uh, you can click this uh, down arrow up here which is in the right hand sort of top right hand corner of your stage work area and you can change that to 200 percent uh, or you can use the magnifying glass tool to zoom in and then when you need to uh, finish up so yeah when you're doing that rotating to see it better you might want to zoom right in and then after you finish that to zoom out uh, that's a bit tricky you need to go up here and click and go fit in window all right and then everything will fit back in the window okay so you can zoom in by changing that percent and then click the down arrow and do fit in window to bring it back to normal all right so we made our eye and we've got our fill and our stroke and remember we made the yellow face before and then it's just a matter of uh if you wanted to make the radial one remember we showed you how to do that you need to click on the paint bucket click that down arrow do radial gradient uh set up those three the three different colors the kind of uh bright yellow and the uh, medium orange and the dark orange and the paint bucket is the fill remember this is the fill and pencil uh yeah pencil you want to have uh as the black one and just leave that one alone all right so this will make the eye uh so that's our 3d emoji we've got all that set up and then you can just move the eyes across remember you can hold down the alt key and make a second eye all right uh, or you can just do your normal copy and paste that works as well and we've got our two eyes on the emoji and i think that's where we're up to so we're going really well we've got a face and we've got some eyes there which we made using the cookie cutter uh, now if you want to flip things around uh, so that's another thing you can do you can go uh, modify and then transform and flip horizontal so that will flip your eye around okay and you can also flip vertically so it'll flip this eye around the other way so it's staring in this way and we've got a cross-eyed emoji which might be good if you want to have um someone who's totally confused that's the look you're after all right so um or you can even flip them the other way all right and have them both looking out this way an emoji is really scared and looking both ways at once uh just use control z to go backwards uh to what we originally had but yeah you can do that you can click on a shape and go modify transform and flip it horizontal okay so it's the other way around uh facing so that's a handy thing to know so now we're ready to make the mouth and then we'll be just about done so the mouth is made by making a thick straight line and then we bend the line so we need to get on the line tool for this one which is right here uh we set the stroke color to black with that color box and then we're going to make it the same size as we made the outline we're making that eight and what you do is you just draw a straight line going across here which is going to be the mouth now if you get it wrong remember control z to undo and repeat and then you change onto the black arrow tool and the thing is if you move the black arrow tool just underneath where that line is you should get this round curving thing and that means we're changing over to the bending tool so we're just moving the mouse here we're not pressing any buttons when we get the bending tool then press down your mouse button and you'll be on the bending tool and you should be able to pull that down bend it down to make it happy or bend it up to make it unhappy all right so then you just move your mouse uh your mouth into position and everything is good so let's show you that in animate just finishing it off uh getting our mouth done okay so as you said get on the line tool which is just down here this one with the sloping line and if you hover your mouse over it it even says to you that it is the line tool now the stroke color remember we just want that same black color and the stroke size we just want to leave it at eight all right which we had previously uh that's going to work out perfect and you just draw your mouth here like that just draw a straight line now we go off the line tool right onto the black arrow tool that's kind of our home tool that we always go back to and if we move the mouse near here he says 
Uh, it's blinking a bit. I'm not sure why it's doing that, but see how we've got that kind of uh, curvy round thing it's telling us we're on the uh, turnaround tool now, the bending tool. All right, so the bending tool with that round arc. So then we push down with our mouse. I don't know why my mouse has suddenly decided to start blinking. That's painful. And there's our mouth. Now it's not quite right. So we'll just click on it and just move it. And this one doesn't do cookie cutting, which is good. So you can just move it around freely. Um, that's pretty good for our mouth. And there's our smiling emoji. And also what we can do is we can just take all of these things. If you hold down shift while you're clicking, uh, just hold down the shift key on your keyboard while you're clicking. We can get all three of those. Then we can hold down our ALT key to do copying. And then we can make them all down here as well to see what the 3D version would look like. And just move those over and get them centered. So that's kind of our 3D emoji. That red um, circle we don't need anymore. So just click on it and press the delete key on your keyboard. And that's uh, gone. So there we are. There's two emojis. Maybe this one will get down there and bend him up the other way. This is the unhappy emoji. All right. So and then if we click on it, so it's all dotty and highlighted, then we can move that down. So that's the unhappy one. Maybe this one here, we'll click on this eye and we'll do that modify um, transform and the flip horizontal. All right, so he's all confused, like he's cross-eyed and he's unhappy. He's going, oh, what's going on? I don't understand. This is all too hard. And here's the happy emoji. Let's hope we're all happy emojis and we're understanding what's going on and everything's going really well on this lesson. Ah, okay, now there's another thing. You can also make things longer by getting near the end of the mouth and getting the L arrow, uh, which we'll have to go back to animate and just show you quickly. Forgot about that one. So yes, if you want to make this mouth longer, you just mouse near it with the black arrow tool and then you can kind of stretch that and make it longer like this, all right? So you can kind of uh, have the very long kind of unhappy if you want to. So you can get near the end so we need to make sure it's not all dotty, that it's just normal, dark line, not dotty. Go near the end and you get the L shape. All right, go here and you get the bending round one, okay? So we can do bending and the L shape, we can make it shorter if we want to like that, pull it back in as well. Okay, now if you want to make the mouth thicker, uh, we can change the stroke size. We just can click on it and go to the properties. So yeah, maybe that thin mouth doesn't look so good. So we'll just make ours thicker in animate. Okay, so if we click on that, so it's all dotty dot selected and go over here, it should say in the properties on the right hand side. Uh, yeah, this might be better sort of 12 maybe, uh, maybe a bit thicker and we'll make that one a bit thicker as well. Click on it and let's try make that really thick, maybe 14 uh, for its stroke size. Okay, so yeah, you can, they probably look a bit better, a bit thicker. So that's something else we can do. All right, now you can make a composite emoji mouth if you want to. Uh, what we did here is we drew a straight line and then we drew a line, uh, another one and underneath and we kind of bent this one. So we made a straight line, then a bendy line. Then we moved them together so that they matched up. And then we used the paint bucket tool here to get a red fill. Now, if you've got some gaps in between here like this, it won't do the paint bucking filling. Now, sometimes the gaps are really hard to see. So you have to use that zooming in to maybe even go to 800% to see whether there's gaps. Now, if your gaps aren't too big, you can go on this icon here, when you're on paint bucket tool, there's kind of a, an icon that looks like the letter C and you can say close medium gaps or close large gaps and then animate will ignore the gaps and paint it in anyway and fill it in. But if your gaps are too large, like these ones are too large, uh, it's not gonna fill it in. Now, to make them uh, meet up and be okay, what you need to do is remember how you move near there with the arrow tool and you get the L. You can use the L to make this a bit longer and this a bit longer to so make sure they meet up exactly, okay? And when they do meet exactly, uh, then you should be okay and you should be able to make the composite mouse. All right, now make sure you uh, Alt select and right click to convert the lips to a symbol. Yep, so take these, 
all right so you need to draw a square around them remember right click and convert it to symbol do that before you move it on to the emoji so it doesn't do cookie cutting uh, if you've made it into a symbol called mouth by right clicking and going convert to symbol you should be okay and then you can have an emoji like that with a nice um big mouth with big red lipstick on it by the looks of it all right so that's how we do all that you can draw composite shapes this was just done by drawing a bendy one another bendy one um a bendy one here and holding down alt and copying it and i think we did flip horizontal modify transform flip horizontal and then you just move them all up so that they all match up now just make sure the corners match perfectly remember you may have to zoom in to 400 percent or 800 percent to see that um, now resizing the canvas stage background um, we only need about 500 by 500 for a finished emoji so we can change the size of this background and make it a square and what we do there is uh, we just click anywhere on the canvas and the stage color we can leave but in this document settings that'll be 800 and that'll be 600 at the moment just click in there and make that 500 and 500 and then you'll have the square shape and then we can um, draw a square around that and move that back onto there all right so it's in place and then once it's on there we do file save as and save it just as a dot fla animate file in case you want to come back and animate it later and then we're going to export it now and finish off and have our final image that's a image we can put into a powerpoint or a word doc or a python game or something like that all right so let's just go to animate and do those last couple of things all right so here we are now we only want one of these emojis so let's just um do a square around this one and press the delete key and whoops draw a rectangle around there and press the delete key so we're just going to keep this one here now if we click with the black arrow tool anywhere on this blue see how it's 800 by 600 well we were saying probably 500 and 500 is better so you can just type directly in there and change those not 5500 and then you can see that will change to a square then we can uh, draw a rectangle around our emoji and move him into the middle. Now he's ended up being a bit small. So go to that tool that's underneath uh, the black arrow tool and we can kind of expand him out a bit. Now, if you don't want him kind of going um, sideways like that or anything, hold down the shift key and that should keep it perfectly square. So we're just gonna have him fill up that 500 by 500 a lot better by using this one, the transform tool and stretching him out to make him a bit bigger. Now click off that, so that's ready to go. So we're going file, save as, and see this will be a .fla animate file in case you want to go back and work on it later so this is unhappy lesson we'll call him unhappy emoge and we'll save that all right now we're going to export this uh so we can have it in a powerpoint or something like that just by inserting an image or doing something like that now with this guy right uh, if you want to keep that blue background you need to go file now when you press export it does take a while so you might think that animates having problems right now but it's not it just takes a while to bring the export up now if we want a transparent background so we can just put this emoji face somewhere uh these sort of uh, Grand Prix flag, checkered flag thing here. Uh, that's transparency. So you click that to have it turned on. All right. And we use uh, PNG 24 to give us the best resolution with transparency. So what we can do there is, uh, it doesn't tell us where we put the file name. Leave, this isn't the file name. This is if you want to make a preset. Um, so don't click in there, that's a trap. Um, we need to actually do save and then I'll ask us for a name. So we're just going to call it unhappy emoji.png. All right. I also put like PNG in the name. So I know that one's a PNG and I go save and that'll give us a clear version. Now, if you do want that blue uh, as well, then you need to just export it as a JPEG. So if we change this to JPEG, JPEGs don't have transparent backgrounds. Don't worry about this little bit down the side here. Um, that's just something Animate does. Uh, we'll just have high quality on our JPEG and we'll save that. And that's going to be the uh, unhappy emoji JPG. 
Okay, and then that saved that. So let's go to our folder. You can see there's the JPEG one, uh, which has kept the blue around it. But this one here is transparent. So we just got the round circle of the emoji. Okay, so step-by-step -step instructions which you can get from the downloads, uh, that will show you exactly what to do. So remember we went file and then we went export, export image. It does take a while for the export image to um, panel to come up, so don't panic emoji. Uh, Animate hasn't crashed or anything. You just have to wait. There is a bit of a lag, so be patient. Just wait for that screen to appear. On that screen, if you want that transparent background, remember uh, PNG24 is the one to pick in this drop-down arrow. Then you click on your... Uh, and we have to make sure transparency is ticked as well. So underneath this box, after you've selected PNG24, make sure transparency is picked. Um, if you don't click that, you can actually save a blue background PNG one, but we want it transparent because we just want the round emoji. We don't want the background. So make sure that is ticked. That's very important. And we don't put the name on here of the file. Remember, you click save and then that will bring this up. And then you can put the name of the guy that you're saving and click save. And you've now got a clear background image. So like in this document here, you can just place that and see how it's got a clear background. And we could likewise insert that unhappy one we put in here as well, um, just in PowerPoint using insert image when we're making our PowerPoint. Uh, so uses of the emojis, they can go into um, Adobe animations. You can use them in video productions, PowerPoints, Word docs, website graphics, social media, games programming projects. So we made it this emoji, this, um, kind of laughing face one uh, with the complex kind of mouth here with the teeth. And uh, yeah, we use this on this uh, Visual Studio game, uh, which is a prank game. It pranks you and you can't click anywhere to win a million dollars because the button keeps jumping around. It's called Jumping Button. That is on our, our YouTube, Jumping Button in Visual Studio, if you want to make that one. But we made the actual emoji uh, right here in Flash. And see how we made eyebrows here? We just made some straight lines and bent them around the other way. So as well as making eyes, you can also make eyebrows uh, with that straight line. So the challenge task for you now, that you have watched us do it in Animate. You've seen the instructions. You can download uh, the instructions from the video description. It should be easy for you to make a couple of uh, emojis. So we need a happy face one, and we need an unsure kind of face one with some little uh, eyebrows on it as well. All right, so that's a little challenge task for you. You need to be able to make those two in Animate, Sep make them separately and save them. Uh, challenge task two is to make Pac-Man. Okay, so Pac-Man is pretty easy to make with cookie cutter because uh, what you do is you just click on the, um, you make a round circle just like we're making emoji, but you need to cut out this triangle. Now, how you get a triangle is uh, you click on uh, this tool here, which is Polygon. Let me just fix that slide. Okay, that's a bit better. I don't know how to slip down onto paintbrush. You want this one, which is polygons, so how you can draw uh, pentagons, hexagons, but we just want triangles. So you set the number of uh, sides here to three, and that's going to enable us to draw a triangle. And what you can do then is uh, you can draw a red triangle. Uh, that's going to be our cutting out one. And use that transform tool. Remember, that was underneath the black arrow tool. Uh, to change its size and get it all lined up. Then you move it over there and pull it back out again. Now we've lost our two black lines, but that's easily done. Remember, zoom into about 200% so you can see what you're doing and just uh, get on the line tool and make a couple of lines there and make another uh, circle there, uh, which is just all black. And there you are, you've got Pac-Man. So you should be able to easily do that. That's challenge task two. Challenge task three is to create some abstract modern art. Now, some of you might not like art, but um, we just call this Pac-Man Deconstructed was the one we made. And we made four different versions of it. This was version one. Okay, so it's not quite Pac-Man. It's kind of a bendy Pac-Man. Actually, we just used the bending tool to bend that in a bit. Uh, and then we've kind of got this one where we made the ball 3D. So we used a radial gradient with white in the middle and gray around the outside because we thought that looked better. We made a this is where you make a linear gradient, okay, with a line. So instead of leaving it as a black line, just make it into a linear gradient. And we could make it kind of go from the red to the gold to the gray. Uh, this one here, we just put a background on it and we made a 
triangle and stretched it all out and things with the transform tool and the skew tool and then we got a gradient happening in that and this one here we just put a whole bunch of those um, gradient lines we made one and then we held down alt and carefully copied it to make the spacing so that's ours that's called pac-man deconstructed so i'm sure you can come up with something inventive just draw a whole bunch of random shapes and things and get a bit of abstract modern art happening and that's your last challenge task and then you will have finished this lesson so have fun with adobe animate uh we're hoping to put a few uh lessons out i've already got a few up there uh there might be one or two more coming when we've got time but we've also got to get on to doing some uh visual studio uh we want to make this kind of alien invader game uh, so maybe we're doing that next we're not sure but anyway have fun with adobe animate make sure you subscribe to our channel and tell your friends about it and um yeah thanks for the uh messages we've been getting from the uk we've got a whole bunch of people in the uk learning with Passis world of ict they've come on board now so that's really good and we will see you in the next lesson